All right, I'm switching back to my broadcast voice. I'm mm. ready to go. Hold on. Mm -hmm. hey. You're not. It's mm. almost like I stole your ability to speak there. <laughs> But that's fine. It's my episode. You can just listen to me talk. It's All like, right, just, that's it. Yeah, excellent. I'm just going to sit here. Watch. I've been thinking about URLs. There's one. On your own blog, as always. Thought well I'd done. Got to advertise my blog. It's, uh, I haven't done anything in 2020 yet, but you know, it's a URL. Um, every now and then, there'll be a, like a Twitter thing goes around like, about Chrome changing URLs or something. No. Killing. Killing URLs is We're killing normally URLs. the way it's, it's put. And um, everyone's angry about it. Um, so I kind of wanted to just like condense some of my thinking about URLs. Uh, hopefully, it won't be too controversial. It might be a little controversial. Let's see. I the comments know. will let us know. URLs, what are they? They are like a serialization of a request. Yeah? Does that make sense? Part of it. Part of it. And that is absolutely a good point. But I can give you this string, and you can make a request with that that will hopefully give you the same content. But you're right. It is partial because it is missing. I mean, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. I, I'll, I'll accept this for now. OK. You hold on to your grievances, yes. and we can just deliver because them I'm, at the I'm, end of the episode. I'm worried I'm going to spoil something that you're going to bring up. The things that this doesn't contain, things like headers, mm -hmm. HTTP method, HTTP body, Right. The fact that it's HTTP. The fact that it's HTTP, uh, yeah, that's because Chrome hides it. I know, but yeah, that's, that's but what, 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 HTTPS actually you know, uh -oh. I don't care about security. <laughs> um, but yes, but that, and that in some ways that's a good thing. Like those things are absent because it means that you know you're sending your own cookies, your own client yeah. hints, so you'll get an experience that's better tailored to you, but still the same core content. I actually think the fact that the body is missing from this is a problem. I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. But if you've gone to, you know, filled in a form and you're now looking at a page right. and you go, I want to share that, there's nothing that the browser tells you that yeah. that is not going to work. Yeah. Because it's never going to work because it's, it's, you know, there's a post body there. Um, I mean, I have the feeling that that kind of architecture where you actually send a post request has slowly been disappearing from the web over time, which is not mm. a good thing, but I feel like it has. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, one of the things that avoids is when you hit the refresh button and yeah. it goes, do you want to resubmit the form? Which is a weird user experience. A lot of people don't understand what's True. going on, uh, which is totally understandable. Uh, but like the fact that I can give share this string around, um, I think, is one of the things that makes the web good. Like yes. it's one of the killer features Agreed. of the web. Put that alongside view source, dev tools. Like that is what brought me to the web. That's why I'm Agreed. a web developer. Um, here's a couple of URLs. Um, oh, they're so pretty. They're real URLs, except I've changed the, the host name just to you know <laughs> disguise the site. But I mean, totally hard to find when the entire title is in there. Well, so that's it. Would you say this is a bad URL? Like, it's not a bad URL. I'm, I, I always go a bit, when I see the whole blog post or news article title in the URL, I'm like, it does make for a long URL. Yeah. And long URLs tend to look ugly. But um, put these two U URLs side I mean, by this side. One is definitely worse. Yeah. Right? You, if you see that in a text file, you roughly know what it is, right? That it's UK news. It, it's got a nice hierarchical structure. Yeah. UK news from 2020, January the 7th. And it's about some archaeologists doing a thing, right? Yeah. Whatever. This Fine. one I find weird because the query part actually only starts here. But this already has like a ref equals, like, what? It's great. Yeah. But that is a, a, a an item in a. Uh, popular online shop, I let's see. say. Um, but I, yeah, so I would say this is nicer. Let's see someone in the comments put in which item this is. Oh, that, yeah, that would be fun to find out. I think it's quite easy to find out. <laughs> I hope there's none of my personal data in here. <laughs> I didn't test that. Um, that would be very bad for the site if they were doing that. Anyway, yes, this is nicer. It's shorter. You can tell what it is. But really, both of these URLs work. Yeah. They both sure. do their job. Like, I can give you either of these, and you land where I wanted you to land. Exactly. Um, and I do think that you know, when it comes to URLs, I think we have a bit of Stockholm syndrome when it comes to like, yeah. people who've worked on the web for a long time, or even used the web for a long time. Uh, and the way I try and explain this to people, and I'm going to give you this test now, Oh boy, is how would you explain to a non-technical user that two URLs they have a part of the same site. I've tried this before. And, and, but, and this is an important thing to do, because they could have a URL that they know is from their bank. Well, it's and they've got another URL they're unsure about. 
Yeah. What do they do? Well, it's the kind of thing where, where you tell them, ready to receive the rules. Oh, the rule. Oh, you want to be an actual I, algorithm. Hey, this is not a rhetorical question. I'm All right, actually asking. Step one. <laughs> OK, number one. Is it HTTPS? Does it say ah. HTTPS colon at the start? I, OK. Uh, does it have HTTPS? <laughs> I've just realized I haven't used a pen in like 15 years. <laughs> um, OK, at start. Right, OK, what's number two? Come on. Number two. That's it's not, it's not number no, two. Because now you have to go to the first, first slash, slash after the first double slash. After double and slash. Work backwards from there. Work <laughs> backwards. All right, OK. Are the first two items. Maybe three, the same. First, <laughs> uh, first two. As working from the right, the first two items, right? Because this is a very easy to understand instruction. Maybe list. three. And and what what are you really capturing in this maybe here? It's a very loaded. <laughs> this maybe. is the, the countries that do like gov.uk. Yeah, good old gov.uk. Or you know stuff like that because that's totally. I'm not wondering there might be more. There might be countries that have three top level. Shenanigans. Might I have do not three. know. And and then there's sites. Maybe, actually. maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> maybe five. Do you know, I, I'm going to let you off the hook because it's actually pretty good um, as it goes. I've I created a test set here <laughs> yes. to, to measure you against. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, uh, you know these two here are like the same sites, right? We've got uh, well these three. Fun fact. Well, not fun fact. Explain to me. Same site versus same origin. Um, going to get onto that. OK, good. Hold on to that thought. God damn we're, it. we're getting there. <laughs> um, but so you're, you're thinking about having HTTPS at the start, might not. Like if they're, if they're copying this from a message that's been sent right. in an email, it, it I, might. I did, I, did, I did turn this into discussion. I always have like, is this a secure link to click? Ah, right. So yeah, yes. maybe step one isn't actually necessary. But, but if you're seeing some browser resolving happening first, then yeah. the HTTPS thing might be obvious. Um, I like this example, because um, it has the colon and the slash slash in. Um, <laughs> uh, but th this is definitely evil.com. Oh. I mean, obviously, it has to have you a number between. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 you, you spotted the, the two or three steps back thing, which I tried to capture with the code.uk. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I, you know. Oh, that's a good one. Username and passwords and URLs. Yeah. So this is another evil thing. But you, you did talk about going to the slash I mean, and you working could have backwards. Username HTTP. Yeah, you can't put slashes in it though. Mm. I did test this. You can't put slashes oh. in the username. You would have to escape that. Um, so do you know what? Pretty good. Some of the, the weird stuff. Um, and I think. <laughs> like I was like bank.com. Bank, 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 bank. bank. <laughs> Evil I thought, bank. <laughs> I if you really want to convince people you're a bank, just put bank a ton of times in the <laughs> URL. Because then it's That's Sorry. really a bank, isn't it? it? Yeah, it wouldn't. It must be a bank. They put it five times. Because <laughs> someone evil would think of that. No. You know? um, the three or four thing is like really the, the key where the, the explanation falls down. And, and this that, actually, if I remember correctly, you told me about this one, which I didn't know, is that there is a list. Whoa. Which... Hold on to that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We'll keep that in the episode. Don't worry about it. So I think my conclusion from that is you you can't do it just from a thing written down, yeah. right? Because the you really, you're saying is you need the browser's help. You need the browser's help, and I think the URL bar is where a lot of that should happen. Yes. Um, and so yes, the, 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 his is this the URL a tool that you wrote, Jake? Oh wait, yes, it is. Yes, advertising my own stuff again. <laughs> Got to take every opportunity to do that. Um, I thought I'd compare some of the browsers here. So uh, with we've got all your stuff, with all my stuff. Well, oh, the it's the same site in different browsers. Importantly, okay, same URL. So this is Chrome. This is Edge uh, on Mac. The new Edge. The new Edge. Uh, this is Firefox. Mm -hmm. and this is Safari. Um, not well. There's some differences. M mainly, um, Chrome hides the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we have pivoted to the thing where if it's not HTTPS, it's labeled as insecure, isn't it? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Edge has chosen to continue to show that, which is interesting. Uh, Firefox and Edge are exactly the same in this example. Kind of the big different one is Safari, which only displays the host name. Yeah. You have to click to get into the path. And you know what? I'm OK with that. I, I am. Because as long as, as well. I can get to the URL, yes. I think the power users should 
feel fine. Yes, and so you can actually see here, it's uh, it's very faint, but the, it, it, the host name is darker than the rest yeah. in all of these examples. So it's trying to, like you were saying, to try and help people uh, focus in on, on the, the, the security important bit. Yeah. We're using like coloring or you know brightness uh, of the or darkness of the, the type here. But yes, I think Safari is the one that makes the host name most obvious because it gets rid of everything else. Yeah. Um, you mentioned security. Um, here is an HTTP page and how modern browsers deal with it. Yeah. Um, as you can see, the well, Chrome, Edge, Safari all do not secure mm -hmm. is their main message. Uh, Firefox a bit the odd one out here has a just a padlock with a cross for it. Interesting. Um, this actually changes once you start editing one of these text fields. Ah. And that's when it gets angry. Ooh, so I like it. Red. Because red, you're typing a red. password into a non-secure website, which means whatever this form sends will not be encrypted. Yes. So if you're on a Wi-Fi in a cafe where you can literally listen in to everybody else's web traffic, yes. there might be your password in plain text. Exactly. So uh, or, or your data, whatever, yeah, like anything and... personal to you. Um, Firefox is the odd one out here. It displays a little overlay um, with incredibly difficult to read text. Yeah, that's very low contrast. I think that might be a bug. Uh, so we'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. Oh, it might be dark don't... mode bug, you think? No, this is light mode. Oh. It's all light mode. Um, dark mode was the this same. because it was black. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it, but it, it was, it was I, the same. I don't so. dislike the, the, the UX pattern. No, I actually quite like this, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is very low contrast. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, so this is a different URL. And a little summer challenge, second one of the episode. There's something different here compared to the other examples. I want to see if you can spot it. I'd, I'd be impressed if you do. Um, and I can give you clues if it's not immediately obvious. Can I go back? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something is different. Like in every browser? or No. Only in? Yes. So Firefox highlights the top, like the top level domain. Well spotted. Well spotted. I, I'm impressed you saw that. Um, yeah, what we're seeing here is compared the top to top level domain, but the what do you call that bit of a domain? <clears throat> It is called the ETLD plus one. The ETLD plus one. Or the public suffix plus one, uh, depending on. Uh, yeah, they, they both mean roughly the same thing. OK. And yes, that's what, that's what you can see happening there. And I think this is really good, because uh, it's sort of highlighting the owner of that. The authority, yeah. The authority. Um, but how is it doing this? And well, this goes down to what you said at the start of the episode. Yeah. Because it, every one of these URLs has three parts and to it. And that's the list I vaguely remember you mentioning to me once, where a browser, every browser must apparently bundle a list of top-level domains, which can have one or more parts. Yes. And plus one to that means that's the authority. Exactly. So yeah, what we see here is profile and help as subdomains of bank.com. Yeah. But even though these have three parts, the browser still knows that bank is the authoritative part. And as you said, there is a list. Oh, it's like they have a nice domain. Yep, public suffix.org slash list. And it's maintained by Mozilla, but all browsers use it. Uh, and it's important because these two websites can share cookies. Exactly. I think that's why we talked about because this becomes very important for stuff like GitHub. Ah, hold on to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. Um, so this is a lot of stuff from, from that list. This, this is not exhaustive, right? This is, this is not exhaustive. <laughs> uh, the exhaustive list is over 8,800 entries. Wait. NHS.UK is a ETLD? Uh, yes. So it would be something.nhs.uk, Pro probably, know probably a, a trust, an individual trust. Interesting. Um, one of the interesting things is the, yes. What is it, shook? Uh, school. Ah. And the reason it has a star on the front is it can have something in front of that that is still part of the ETLD, the public suffix. And that's because in the UK, schools have addresses like this, where the subdomain here is the www. Whereas Southgate is its the, own thing. That's the ETLD plus one. Yep. And then you have like district, like Enfield. Wow. And let me, let me yep. go back one second. Why didn't they spell it out? They spelled out police. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. OK. Yeah, whatever. Who knows? History happened. Um, Consistency. Who needs it? But yes, as you pointed out, this list is not just like registrar-based like suffixes. Yeah. It also has like, suffixes where they sublet. Right. Because something like GitHub.io each user gets their own subdomain. Yes. However, you don't want these subdomains to share cookies because they're different authorities, literally different users. Exactly. Exactly that. And so these are part of the list as well. How do I own. get my blog onto that list? Because <laughs> just for lols. Uh, th there's a submission process. It's quite easy. 
Uh, oh. You just go and say, oh, this should be part of it. And they go, OK. I guess there's probably a bit more checks than that. But <laughs> it is, it's, a, it's, it's an open list for people to go and add to. I mean, yeah. so much technology to well, if you can prove you're subletting out, you, you give me part of your website. <laughs> Jake has part of it. We need to be secure. Yeah. Like, I don't want his stupid cookies. There are lots of complicated rules where sometimes like um, uh, every something dot the thing uh, is a separate one, but then one of them isn't. Like, and yeah, and this, this list can broken. take. It is super difficult, but. Firefox is using that list. That's amazing to make this thing. So I think that's really, really good. So yeah, you can see that what WG is obviously not on this list. What WG.org only .org is. Yes. However, GitHub.io is on the list as an yes. ETLD. That means you know you go you get the plus ETLD one ETLD plus one, which means in this case Jake Archer was included. So that one gets blackened. This one is only that. One. Yeah, I like it. I think it's really I think it's really smart. And to and be so fair, you could even now go the step. It's actually interesting that Safari doesn't use the list. I agree. Because they should just I show the agree. things that are important. That seems like a really good solution to this problem, a fishing problem. Because like, so here's, here's some URLs put through this pattern. Yeah. Um, and she used my name for one. I did. I advertised. Oh, thank you. Uh, but I, it's not a real URL, no, so it's, it's OK. <laughs> I couldn't quickly find a project of yours. Uh, I wanted Underdash. To. If you've watched the previous video, oh. you would know. Well, OK. <laughs> I should have edited it. But I, I think this is good, because this makes it the, the evil one yes. super obvious. This would help. Non-technological people to actually know what to look at. Except there's a bunch of other stuff either side of it. Right, but that's when you know, if we took the Safari pattern, just you don't show anything else unless you are a user that clicks on it and wants to see the full shenanigan. Yeah. So I decided to to put forward my design for the URL bar, and I want to absolutely stress that this is not a Google authorized thing, not a Chrome authorized this thing. This is a Jake authorized thing. Jake reckons. <laughs> this is it with my Jake limited. Jake spent the day preparing these slides and thought, I can do better than this. Exactly. I'm just going <laughs> to throw my hat in the ring. And it's, there's probably reasons why it's bad. Um, but it's interesting that you came to a very similar conclusion already. Um, I'm going to expect Mike West to show up in the comments now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just being really angry. He's like, don't put this episode out. It's ridiculous. One of the inspirations I actually took uh, from this is what we used to do, or what multiple browsers used to do with extended validation certificates. Yes. Where they show the name of the company. Like this. And at the start of the URL, um, EV certs turned out to be problematic and because useless. Because getting an EV cert wasn't as watertight as we assumed it would be. Exactly. Right? So browsers ignore them now. But I, I found this bit of UI interesting. So that's kind of where I started. Um, and so I thought, like, well, what if we put the ETLD plus one at the start and then put, because people get angry when you say kill URL, remove <laughs> URL. So I thought, like, well, we can keep it, but we put it in gray and after. There's not, not enough space, you do this, I guess. Well, this would be the mobile view. Right. Which... But you can still tap it to get to the URL, right? Like you can still, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not gone. Yeah. I mean, this design I have stolen from Safari. Um, yeah. But it's using, like you said, ETLD plus one rather than hostname. Yeah. Um, so yes, in the WhatWG case, uh, it, it would be like this. Why are we shipping this? Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be told why. Um, and yeah, the, the evil well, case. I'm guessing they, I, I would assume the security people are quite smart. They're probably considering this, but I think every change to something as fundamental oh, as yeah. the address bar, they, they always work slowly to be careful and to see how changes work. Uh, so this will probably be you know in ten years' time. And <laughs> I, when we've already seen like it has to, you have to take small steps here, like yeah. we did with the HTTPS change. Yeah. People get angry and suspicious when you talk about like yeah. changing the URL bar. But I, I look at this and I think, and, and it doesn't solve all problems. Like it doesn't no. solve the problem like an R and an N together can look yeah, like the an Unicode, M. Unicode's the, the Unicode. We've actually got some interesting. I wasn't going to talk about this, but we've got some interesting solutions there where we unpack it to the the Punicode oh. but encoded values if it's mixed language. So if you're using all of the character set from that part of Unicode, fine. But if you're crossing mm. them over where you might end up with two things which look almost exactly, if not actually identical to an A. Oh, that's good. So then, then this it, would actually then you would say that, see the puny code. You would see the puny code. And no, it would that be makes fine, sense. Which I was very clever. I hadn't yeah. really appreciated that until I did so some the, research. For the this. only gap there is like if I can actually misspell a Western company's name with a completely different alphabet and only code. But yeah. use yeah. Okay, uh, fine. And you, you still got the like the uppercase uh, I, I looks mean, like an L. Yeah. Uh, but the, uh, you know you can have the browser adjust for the case. R and then looks like an M. Not sure what you do about that. Apart from this I mean, a good that's font. just bad kerning at that point. It's bad kerning, exactly, or hemming, <laughs> uh, yes. as, it, as it's called. But that is really all I got. 
And I'm glad that you've rubber stamped this, and we'll ship it in Chrome yeah, tomorrow. The 203 <laughs> seal of approval. There we go. That's it. I, I really want to hear what the security people say to this. Well, hate we'll, it. We'll, we'll <laughs> let people know in the comments or something. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello, everyone. I'm still ill. One week later, it's almost like we record these in one group together. Oh, look at my voice is going. <laughs> <coughs> Don't waste, waste your voice. We still have a oh, yeah. podcast to that's, record. That is true. <laughs>